hopefully in a couple of weeks we will be able to decide when we return to the church itself. As well as using hymns in the service, these are laid out so that you can have a service of worship and praise during using the hymns and songs during the week. Of course, you could just listen to any music on YouTube, but this selection is particularly designed to lead us musically through the rhythm of a service. Normally, we would be having a 9.45 service at this stage, and um, we have three hymns to use to enable our reflection to prepare our hearts for worship. And now, O oh Father, mindful of, that, of the love, O oh love that will not let me go, and hail the day that sees him rise. As we come to our communion service, our opening hymn is a great declaration, I will worship. And the psalm for today will be a Psalm 128, a song of ascents that the people of Israel sang together as they moved up towards Jerusalem for the feasts. And Jenny will read it to us. Psalm 128. Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in obedience to him. You will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots round your table. Yes, this will be the blessing for the man who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you live to see your children's children. Peace be on Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. We come together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Faithful one whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. We join together in the St. George's Prayer. Our Father, as individuals and as a community, may we come to know and love you more and more, May we feel your love and care through each other. May we be witnesses to Christ wherever we are. And by the power of your Holy Spirit, may we be attentive to you, to our neighbor, and to your world. And we sing a song of celebration, particularly for the children, Peace Like a River. On the YouTube link, you'll find great actions to do along with that one. Christ, the light of the world, has come. He's come to chase away the darkness of our hearts. And therefore, in his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. And we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us that all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and, and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And our response this morning is sung by a, a Taze hymn, Nothing Can Trouble. And uh, you can either listen to it or join in the words. 
collect for today. Generous God, you give us gifts and make them grow. Though our faith is small as mustard seed, make it grow to your glory and the flourishing of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Endeavor is going to come and give our Bible readings to us. Our Old Testament reading for today is taken from Genesis chapter 29, verses 15 to 28. I'll give you a moment to look that up. Laban said to him, Just because you are a relative of mine, should you work for me for nothing? Tell me what your wages should be. Now, Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder one was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah had weak eyes, but Rachel had a lovely figure and was beautiful. Jacob was in love with Rachel and said, I'll work for you seven years in return for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, it's better that I give her to you than to some other man. Stay here with me. So Jacob served seven years to get Rachel, but they seemed like only a few days to him because of his love for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, give me my wife. My time is completed and I want to make love to her. So Laban brought together all the people of the place and gave a feast. But when evening came, he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob, and Jacob made love to her. And Laban gave his servant Zilpah to his daughter as her attendant. When morning came, there was Leah. So Jacob said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? I served you for Rachel, didn't I? Why have you deceived me? Laban replied, It is not our custom here to give the younger daughter in marriage before the elder one. Finish this daughter's bridal week. Then we will give you the younger one also in return for another seven years of work. And Jacob did so. He finished the week with Leah and then Laban gave him his daughter Rachel to be his wife. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament reading is taken from Romans chapter 8, verses 26 to 39. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, 
that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword as it is written for your sake we face death all day long we are considered a sheep to be slaughtered no in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us for i am convinced that neither death nor life neither angels nor demons neither the present nor the future nor any powers neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we turn to the gospel, we prepare our hearts by singing or listening to, if we'd like, the song, Spirit of the Living God, Fall Afresh on Me. And you can find that through the link available to you. The gospel is taken from Matthew chapter 13, verses 44 to 52. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping 
and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? Jesus asked. Yes, they replied. He said to them, Therefore, every teacher of the law who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I'm entitling today's talk, Living with Confidence. There are many difficult things in these passages today. I would love to do a seminar on them. The Psalm 128 really suggests that if you fear God, your wife will have children. Does Genesis 29 say that marrying two sisters at the same time is okay? Does Romans 8 teach that everyone who belongs to Christ is predestined to belong to him? Is the gospel teaching that there is a literal blazing of fire and is eternal? As someone who believes in the complete authority of scripture and believes we cannot place some parts on a shelf saying that was what they believed then, I have to struggle to understand the difficult parts and to see how it fits into the whole. I believe God expects us to use our minds. So again, I would love to do a seminar on them. But what do I say about these passages in a 15 to 20 minute sermon? First of Psalm 128, obedience to God leads to a better life. The message here is that walking in obedience or living a life faithful to the way of God or being people of the way, as the Christians were called in Acts, does make a difference. Here it talks about blessing and prosperity and children and grandchildren. The Bible is not naive. The Psalms also ask why the wicked do so well and the righteous not. There seems to be a contradiction to each other. We see these two views being argued out in the book of Job. In interpreting the Bible, we have to distinguish between the general and the specific. In general, it is absolutely true that walking God's ways leads to a better and more whole life. But in the specific, there may be persecution, sickness and death. Having worked in a number of poor, poorer countries and visited shanty towns and favelas, I would want to say that this teaching is absolutely true. Good values generally do make for a better life. The lesson for me from Genesis 21 is of constancy despite deception. In this story, the one who deceived his own father by pretending he was Esau, his brother, is himself deceived. The story is very simple. Jacob preferred Rachel, younger, lovely figure, and beautiful. Leah, the older sister, had weak eyes, whatever that means. Jacob wanted to marry Rachel. They were probably first cousins, in actual fact. Marriage was often to do in that culture with protecting the woman. Was this what Le Leah, uh, Laban was thinking about when he sneaked Leah in instead of Rachel? Was he telling the truth that the culture was that the elder should marry first? Was he simply wanting Leah off of his hands? The story as it developed shows that Jacob's uncle Laban was a bit of a scoundrel. Jacob works 14 years for these women, or really for Rachel. 
I think he really did appreciate her. Verse 7 tells us about the first seven years. This seemed like only a few days to him because of his love for her. How incredibly romantic. I always feel a little bit sorry for Leah. There was a poignant verse in Genesis 49:31 about Jacob visiting Hebron. And it says, there Abraham and his wife Sarah were buried. There Isaac and his wife Rebekah were buried. And there I buried Leah. It seems as if by the end of it all, she came to be appreciated. If you go through the names of the children that she bore, you will see something of her story, but we don't have time for that just now. The story of injustice and deception is not the end. These two women are the mothers of Israel. There's a blessing, blessing in Ruth, uh, Ruth chapter 4, verse 11. May the Lord make the woman who is coming into your home like Rachel and Leah, who together built up the family of Israel. And today there is a Jewish blessing for daughters which says, may God make you like Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel and Leah. She is not forgotten. This is not a passage dealing with marriage. It is a, a passage about dealing with being loved and unloved and about God bringing good out of wrong. And this is seen in Romans 8. The New Testament reading from Romans 8, 26 to 39 is one of these enormously encouraging passages of scripture. Our weakness expressed in earlier parts of Romans is recognized. There are a number of steps in understanding God's help in our lives. Verse 26, the Spirit helps us. Verse 26, again, we do not know how to pray, but the Spirit intercedes for us through wordless groan. In verse 33, it says, in fact, that Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Both the Holy Spirit interceding for us and Jesus speaking on our behalf. And then we come to a principle of life. We know that in all things, God works for good for those who love him and who are called a calling to his purpose. It doesn't mean that the thing is good, but rather God works it out for good in whatever circumstances we find ourselves. And this is about relationships. It says those who love him. Relationships are the essence of Christianity. We come to Christ out of our own choice but we have a sense of God drawing us to himself. We can be confident in, confident in this because in verse 26 to 30, in our identity in Christ and our relationship with him, we're not being given a doctrine to analyze. We're not being asked about what happens to others. We're not told about living in time and living outside time as God does. And we're not told about all that lies behind holding these things together. Rather, we're being told something that is a pastoral strength to us. We are foreknown, unpredestined, called, justified, glorified. And none of these are ends in themselves. They are, it says in verse 29, that we might be conformed to the image of his son. People who will live in and for Jesus and seek to live as Jesus in our world. To them, to us, is given the assurance of verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? In order to live freely, we need a sense of identity. And this is the greatest sense of identity possible. His generosity knows no bounds. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him 
graciously give us all things. Listen to these words. Take them to heart. Read them often. Absorb them. Hold on to them. And be assured, God is with you. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or, or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we're facing death all the day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life Neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in our creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. This leads to a deep confidence in God that makes sense of the man in Matthew 13, who finding treasure in a field, in his joy went and sold all that he had and bought that field. Makes sense of the man finding a peril of great value who sold everything he had to buy it. This is the logic of faith. If it is true, then this is the most sensible thing to do. Both of these stories involve negation. Negation is part of love. And saying yes to one woman or one man, you're saying no to all others. Saying yes to worshipping God is saying no to worshipping anything else. Something extra precious is worth everything. And it is true of human relationship and of our relationship with God. Then Jesus tells in another parable, and I think he is saying that if we don't make God our priority, then there are consequences. It is a similar message to the parable of the wheat and the weeds of last week. I am glad that it is at the end of the age that separation is made. It's not up to me or the church to decide who is genuine and who is not. Judgment in the Bible, though, is real. It is consequential and it is just. God respects our choices. Jesus in verse 51 asks, have you understood all these things? And on saying yes, I really wonder about them saying yes, but on saying yes, he talks about treasures and says that this teaching of Jesus are new treasures, not to replace the old, but to be added to the old. In the church, we must always be watching for new treasures as we continue to celebrate the old. And so to close, there is far too much here to do it justice. My prayer is that there may be something that stirs you to further reflection, encourages you to greater confidence and blesses you so that you bless others and in all that God's name may be glorified. Amen. Let us say the Apostles' Creed together. This is what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Amen. And so we come to the prayers of the people. Almighty God, as a church, we daily pray that your kingdom come. But most of the time, we so often live in ways that prevent its coming. We spend too much of our time trying to build our own human kingdom, putting ourselves rather than you at the center of our lives. Send your spirit to remind us that you are first. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we thank you for the example of leadership given to us by your son, Jesus Christ in his life on earth. We pray for the renewal of a spirit of humility and a sense of responsibility among leaders of this world that the hungry might be fed and the oppressed might be freed to live in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we worship you as the one who has given us this life and we ask that you will help us to live it to the full. At home, may we be the friends and neighbors that we really want to be. Help us to spread the warmth of your love to everyone we meet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty God, we thank you for your love and compassion for all who suffer in body, mind and spirit. We pray that your healing presence will calm their fears, ease their pain, and bring light into the darkness of all who are sick. We ask that you be with us and all who need your loving touch at this time. In the quiet, let us bring before God those in need of prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, through the ministry of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have freed us from the grip of the tomb. We pray for those who have departed this life and we entrust them to your loving kindness. We pray too for those bereaved by their passing. Let us bring before God those who have passed away and those grieving their loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, hear these prayers we offer you in Christ's name by the power of your Holy Spirit. Work within us and among us to bring your kingdom into this world. Let your will be done so that all people may live only for your praise and glory. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Jenny. And so we come to the peace. Peace to you from God, our, who is our Father. Peace from Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, who gives us life. Peace of the triune God be always with you. Let us greet one another with a sign of peace. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Our offertory hymn uh, for today is Soldiers of Christ Arise. Sometimes people say we shouldn't use militaristic uh, language, but uh, is there in the Bible? Soldiers of Christ. Arise. God of all goodness and grace, receive the gifts we offer and grant that our whole life may give you glory and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning, you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. 
the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to declare your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord, as a mother tenderly gathers her children. You embraced a people as your own. When you turned away, when they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. And from them you raised up Jesus our Savior, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends. Taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at the last with all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendor for which you have created us through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom by whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Draw near with faith, Receives the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink and remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of Christ 
broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer your souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And so as we come to the end of communion, we sing our final hymn, which is the Lord bless you and keep you. Jenny Shaw, who does our recordings, and thank you to Jenny and uh, the other Jenny and Mark and everyone who takes a part in this. Uh, but Jenny has put in two versions on the YouTube link. The Lord bless you and keep you. And I think they're great. The second one, if I remember rightly, is children singing it uh, during this time of lockdown and uh, from singing from different countries. And a prayer. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill you. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.